I've always liked the prehistoric vibe of the creatures of the Mountain of Morn that the ogres make use of, and this pygmy mammoth from Reaper Miniatures made for a perfect tyrant's mount. What I don't love is the mammoth's flat top military style haircut, so I snipped it off. I knew I wanted to cover his head with armor, so I didn't worry about making it pretty. This is the face armor to an Iron Jaws Gore Grunter, and is pretty perfect for this build. It's roughly the correct size, and the crude metal of it fits the ogre aesthetic. Before I glued it in place though, I dry fitted some ogre legs onto the back of the mammoth to make sure it wouldn't conflict with the face armor. I'd originally planned on using this pair from the Mormfan kit, but they're kind of stunted and fat and short, especially in comparison to the Ogre Tyrant kit. Instead of trying to lengthen the Mormfan legs to be more proportional, I decided to instead just use the original Tyrant legs and reposition them. The right is already in a plausible sitting position, and the left only took angling the knee back a little. The insides of them I also shaved down a fair amount so they wouldn't stick out too much. I used green stuff to form a crude saddle blanket. As part of the prehistoric aesthetic, I didn't want it to be a proper saddle, just something thrown over the back of the mammoth without much care. While the green stuff was still soft, I pressed in the tyrant legs so they fit without a gap. This also gave me the ability to adjust them to give my tyrant a reasonable seat. To make sure I had the pose I wanted, I glued the tyrant head on so his eye line wouldn't have to be moved around later. While it looked good at this stage, I later realized he was sitting a little too far forwards and I had to move him back. His position was good enough for now though to start dry fitting on his arms. Though you can't really see it here, I really, really like the way his spear looked. The blade is nicely paleolithic, and the way he's holding it high is imposing and imperious. To get his belly plate to fit, I had to snip off the entire hanging portion, and also forego the boar horns that curve up from it. But the tyrant's cloak ended up being a bit more of a problem. For now I cut a half moon out of the back of it with the vague idea of using green stuff later to make it look like it was draping across the back of the mammoth. With the tyrant worked out, I moved back to the head of the mammoth. The mammoth comes with its own tusks, but I liked this pair better. Part of what I was aiming for was the mammoth to not exactly look like a mammoth, but as some kind of precursor species. Behind the tusks, I glued the Gore Grunter armor. Speaking of armor, I unseated the tyrant, shaved down the mammoth's fur, and fitted this huge ass shield to his shoulder. It's one of the pair from the Stonehorn kit and fits really well here, giving the mammoth a little more bulk while still maintaining the crude aesthetic. I used green stuff to fill the gap between the Gore Grunter face armor. Behind it, I layered on a pair of plastic card strips to look like segmented steel. I also used green stuff to mimic the same segmented style over the ears. With all these armor adjustments made, I redid the saddle blanket and pushed the tyrant farther back on the mammoth's back. There's this elephantine ancestor species that has tusks that curve down instead of up. I've always really liked that look, and decided to try and mimic it with my mammoth to try and really emphasize his prehistoric aspect. They didn't look terrible, but they also just didn't look that natural. They look better without the upward curving pair above, but taking those away would introduce all kinds of issues, so in the end I decided to simply have them curve upward as well. This changes the mammoth's silhouette enough to give him that prehistoric edge without being distracting. Using one of the arms from the stone horn kit and strings of green stuff, I gave my tyrant a pair of reins. This turned out well, but also just didn't feel that epic. I like to try and make my builds as plausible as possible, but I don't think it's always strictly necessary for everything to make practical sense. To that end, I replaced the reins with the tyrant's usual hammer hand. Instead of trying to fix the tyrant's cloak, I swapped it with this one. It's actually the cloak from the Ajax Agatone kit, a space marine salamander, but I stripped off its scales and smoothed green stuff over it. It fit over the back of the mammoth better and also has a great windswept quality to it. While I could have put the normal back tusks of the tyrant over the cloak, I felt like they kind of took away from the overall silhouette of my mounted tyrant. He still needed something a little extra to know his tyrant status though, so I globbed green stuff onto his shoulders and started sculpting it into a mantle of fur. I was careful to angle the fur so it looked like it was being moved in the same direction as the wind grabbing his cloak. And with that, my tyrant was ready to swagger on into battle atop his war mammoth. I'm really pleased with how he turned out. It's really easy to picture him leading an ogre warbound down from the mountains, a tall barbarian lord atop a prehistoric beast, long exiled from the lands of men. On the tabletop, I don't really know what he could proxy as. He's too small for a stone horn, but might work as a slightly oversized tyrant, or simply the leader of a Mornfang unit. I'll be doing something a little different with this model. Over on Kofi, I've set up a raffle for him, so if you're interested in getting him, just head over there and buy a ticket so you'll have a chance to win. Thanks for watching.